Today, we're going to talk about the most insane phone calls I've been a part of while working at YMH, including trying to cast a little person for YMH Live, all the talks that went into making the J-Mobile happen, and also the phone conversation I had to have with Paramount Theater in Austin explaining what happens during a YMH Live, which is just the most disgusting clips that we could find on the internet. Prolapsed anuses, porn-related gore, and what an audience uh, at their theater is going to be subjected to. Welcome! To another episode of Catching You Up With... You know, no, it's go bits. I'd like to say that this episode is executive produced by Colin Haley. Without his big baller support, I would probably be traveling all over the world creating sleeper cells of pickpockets that kind of just mail somewhere between 10 to 50% of everything they pickpocket over to HQ. But because of Colin Haley, I don't have to be involved in all that grand larceny. But if you would like to become a big baller supporter of this show and an executive producer, you can click the Patreon link in the description below. Comment, like, subscribe. It all helps the algorithm. Now, I've been a part of conversations throughout my seven or eight years that, you know, while you're in it, you're like, boy, this is an insane thing to be seriously talking about. But at the same time, it was all very fun. All of these particular conversations revolve around YMH lives. Like, I've had tons of wild conversations and phone calls, but these in particular probably make me laugh the hardest. So let's start with phone call number one, booking a little person for a YMH live. So about two Christmases ago, I think was the last true YMH Live uh, that was done. But we started doing a pre-show. You know, it was going to be more staff heavy. So one way that we approached it was visually, what do we want the booth boys to look like during the show? And then we would just kind of work backwards from that. So that when people see it visually, they're going to be like, what the fuck did I miss from the pre-show? So one of the visuals that we wanted during the YMH Live, and I can't remember who came up with this, but the idea was that during the pre-show, we were going to make staff kind of do competitions against each other. And then the winner or loser would then pick either a definitive gift or a mystery box. Just like one or two people knew what all the mystery boxes were. And I was going to make sure that I was going to end up with the mystery box. There was a nativity scene. And the bit was that we had a real baby Jesus in the nativity scene. I think the reveal we had was there was a note that said, feed me. I have won the gift of baby Jesus that I then need to take care of during the entirety of the live show. Some people think that that was the funniest part of that bit. But actually the funniest part of that bit was calling the casting director and explaining the role to them. But we knew this casting director that was just known, you can ask them crazy shit. Let's just call him Justin, right? If the thing that you're asking for is crazy in writing, ask for a phone call. And so I emailed him saying, hey, Justin, I'm looking for a very specific part to cast. Can we speak on the phone? They know what that means. Yeah, just having to explain uh, what the bit was to a normal person i'm just like yeah so we're looking i'm like tell, tell me if you, uh, tell me if you think this is uh hard to cast but what we're looking for is someone a, a little person a little a uh, little man to uh to be dressed up as baby jesus and uh we're gonna be putting him in a nativity scene in a big old bale of hay a big old pile of hay he's gonna be sitting in um you know for a while uh, for a while, he will kind of be acting like baby Jesus throughout the show, and he will be complaining to be fed and uh, that he's thirsty, um, you know, within, within a reasonable sense. But, you know, just wanted to ask you real quick, do you think that that would be hard to cast? Without missing a beat, Justin starts laughing. He goes, I don't think that'll be hard to cast at all. In fact, I have a short list of people. <laughs> oh, I just got my ass with that one. He ended up booking a Houston comic who, funny enough, his name is Clinton Shorter, and he was such an incredible sport. It's fun. We have fun. It was fun. He had fun. Because, <laughs> you know, when you're coming up with ideas, and you're like, oh, shit, it would be really funny if we did X, Y, Z, you then realize, oh, shit, I'm the one that has to make phone calls to make this happen. And then you start making those phone calls, and you're like, 
what the fuck is my life? So yeah, casting a little person. That was the little amuse bouche. The next one is the history of the J-Mobile, aka J My Ride. And this was a bit I had pitched for so long. The bottleneck in getting it made was never that we didn't think it was a funny idea. It was finding people that were willing to do it. I was driving a 2012 Honda Civic and I was thinking, because I was leaning in so much into the J stuff that it's like, wouldn't it be funny if we had the concept of like pimp my ride, but make my car super Jewish. Someone had a connection to West Coast Customs, which was the mechanic garage that did pimp my ride. So I remember the first time that we reached out and I don't think I was part of the initial reach out. We didn't say, or they didn't say what, the actual ask was they're like hey your mom's house uh podcast and studios are interested in doing a pimp my ride type thing would you guys be interested in doing a collaboration we'd love to hire you to do this skit with us oh my god we fucking love you guys we would love to do something with you hey so yeah the here's the concept it's jay my ride you're gonna make one of our employees cars super fucking jewish <laughs> And then they just went radio silent on us. They just stopped returning our phone calls, our emails. Fuck me, dude. That's so fucking funny. In my mind, I thought that that idea was just scrapped. Two, three years later, we are now in Austin, Texas. My eyebrows just start raising. I go, you know what we could try doing again? J my ride. We could J my ride. It's like, we'll just start calling people and see if anyone in Texas is down to make an anti-Semitic car. <laughs> and so I think what we realized was that the reason why it didn't work so much the first time is because it was going to be pitched as a prank on an employee that was unaware of it. I had to be the one that was saying these ideas because if it was me saying it, then they knew that I was cool with it. So I remember one of us got uh, a crew on the line and God, they're so fucking good. They've worked on so many big time Hollywood productions. We set up the phone call and it's, it's me, the guy that would be running the mechanic team and my direct boss. And I'm like, hey man, thanks so much for, for taking the call. Uh, so just to reiterate, this is kind of the premise of what we're doing is, you know, Tom and Christina are going to try and do a nice thing for me and surprise me and like pimp my ride, but really they're going to J my ride and, you know, all the modifications that we'd be doing um, would be, uh, you know, J themed. And so I was like, all right, first, um, spinny, spinny Jewish star rims. All right, what else? Israeli flags, like just everywhere. Like I want decals all over the outside of the car, um, you know, uh, IDF stickers. And you know what? Also, if we could put fucking flag holders in the back so we could put two Israeli flags in there, I think that'd be good. And I could hear my boss, like he is definitely muted on the call, but I could hear him laughing in from his office. And he goes, what else? Uh, I'm like, you know when you open up really nice car doors, they just kind of like have like a, a light projection on, on the street of like the, their logo and stuff. He's like, yeah. I'm like, so those will be Jewish stars or just waving Israeli flags. Okay, what else? I want you to take out the stereo and the CD player so that the only things you could listen to it on are Jewish klezmer music. <laughs> I just start hearing my boss laugh in the other room and this guy starts laughing really hard on the call. He's like, okay, these are all great. And I'm like, no, 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 hold on. I'm like barely halfway done with the list. Okay, what else? Well, the horn of the car... Uh, we would like to replace that with uh, with Hitler speeches. <laughs> he just like, okay, okay, yeah, dude, I think we could do all this. I'm like, hold on, I got a couple more big ones. Uh, I got a couple more big ones on the list to tell you. Big ol' Hasidic Jew hat on top and a big ol' fucking propaganda like Jew nose on the front of the grill. Like, I want this car to not be street legal. And he's like, oh my god. He even reaffirms, he's just like, you're okay, this is your car? I'm like, yeah, and you're okay with this? I'm like, yeah, I'm, yeah, this is my idea. I'm, uh, yeah, I'm cool with all of this stuff. He goes, all right, dude, yeah, we could do all this. Um, no problem. I'm like, hold on, there's one last thing. And he's just like, what? 
the trunk needs to be a working kosher Jewish deli. <laughs> and he just starts laughing. I hear my boss just losing it in the next room. What are these conversations we're having? Sometimes you just pinch yourself and you're like, what the fuck is this life, dude? And a funny little tidbit. We were originally going to film it at a real mechanic shop. And I want you to keep in mind that a week before... We filmed this. Kanye West all of a sudden decided to become super anti-Semitic publicly. <laughs> the guy that owns this mechanic shop is seeing all these big boy cameras. Like guys with fucking microphones are starting to fucking boom and like testing shit and micing people up. Tom Segura and Christina P show up in fucking super cool cars. The mechanic comes up to uh uh one of the producers and this dude was just like yeah i'm not cool with this being filmed here man like i'm just the, it's a weird climate and i do not want to be involved in any part of it which in all honesty i respect it luckily we were able to think on our feet and we were just changed location we we're like okay well we don't need this mechanic in order to make this piece make sense yeah that was uh those were the fun conversations in getting the j-mobile made and then this was my favorite. This was probably my favorite conversation that I've ever had on the job. And it was just because I made agent jeans laugh. That's what Tom and Christina call their agent. He's incredible. He's always been such a great resource, such a nice guy. Every now and then, you know, there'll be something that we're working on where me and him will have to be on the same call. And so the conversation that we were having this time, I think we had just done a YMH Live in West Palm Beach. That was done where we recorded it and then we edited it in post and then we released it. But this next one that we wanted to do, we wanted to stream live from the venue. And this venue was the Paramount Theater in downtown Austin. A big part of that call was just making sure that, you know, they had all the technical capabilities to be able to fulfill our needs. What's your internet bandwidth? Do we have to follow union rules? How long do we have to prep everything? Everything logistical. And I, I tried to take care of all that stuff at the front because I knew that as we progressed, this is kind of a closer part of the conversation. But at the same time, I had to get real answers. So this was, I think, the sixth YMH Live that we're doing. And we have gotten into a rhythm. We know that there's a solo part that has normal YMH clips. Honestly, it just means that it's they're not heavy clips, but we can't show them in the normal show. So I had to make sure that that stuff was okay and then slowly build my way up, right? Porn related, gore. And I had to make sure that the theater understood what was going to be played at their theater. Is there a limit to what we can show and play on the big screen? And they're like, no, you can play whatever you want. I'm like, there's absolutely no limit to what we can play. All right, I'm going to start naming some examples of things that we've played in the past. Let me know if you have an issue with this. Public defecation. No, uh, no, I, I think you I think you could play. It. I, yeah, you could play that. I'm like, okay, what about uh, people having sex in public outside? Uh, yeah, I mean, I don't I don't see a problem. Guys, <laughs> I don't see a problem isn't an acceptable answer for us here. I need to hear specific sentences because there's a lot of witnesses on this phone call. And if all these witnesses hear this specific sentence being said, we're protected. It is now no longer our fault if for some reason something happens with these clips being played to 1,200 people in a theater because we got it cleared. So whoever cleared it to us, now it's their fault, right? So when they were like, yeah, public fornication's okay, I was like, cool, what about just straight up traditional porn? I'm like, what do you mean? I'm like, like full penetration, like a double vaginal, double anal. You know what? Let's all, do you guys know what a prolapsed anus is? And they're like, what? <laughs> like, it's when your butt falls out of your ass. Um, it looks like something medically wrong is happening. And we have shown a lot of that in the past. And let me tell you, we're already in the prepping phase for this episode. There's going to be some of that in this one, too. And they're just like, um, yes, that could be okay. Meanwhile, Agent Jeans is texting me saying, this is one of the most insane phone calls I've ever been on. You know, I read that and I start laughing to myself and I go, you know what? Let's make Agent Jeans laugh a little bit harder. Okay, guys, so um, we're okay with prolapsed anuses. We're okay with full-on penetration of the double and triple variety. <laughs> There's also a lot of Japanese fetish stuff that we'd like to play. Everything's consensual, but, like, people are definitely getting hurt here. And then also in terms of, like, limbs being... I mean, gore is, is okay with you, right? And they're like, what kind of gore? Yeah, let's just say a, a landscaping accident 
where some guy cuts a tree and then the branch swings into his face. And literally all I could say um, to describe it is that it just breaks every piece of his face. He survives, but every piece of his face is broken and you see the aftermath. Can we show that? We accidentally play that on a normal show of ours. <laughs> like, um, <laughs> yeah, guys have a policy on showing home surgeries. <laughs> They're like, what are you talking about? <laughs> And like, well, you know, on the last YMH Live, uh, there was this Russian dude that I think had some sort of growth on his uh, on his eyeball, shooting syringes, you know, just like a normal home surgery. Wasps, and you know, of course, like a lady masturbating with a chef knife. You know, all of this should be fine. None of this should, guys. Like, I need a I need a definitive answer. Is this okay or is this not okay? And I can't remember if they gave me the actual okay on that phone call. Or if they said something like that and I demand, like, you guys need to email me in writing um, that everything I just explained to you is allowed and that we have no restrictions on what we're allowed to show. And yeah, they agreed to all of it. We finish up that call and then Agent Jeans and I just exchange a couple words of how insane that is. And you're a witness. I'm a witness. Everyone on that call is a witness. We're officially allowed to show all the clips that make a YMH Live a YMH Live. And I'd say probably one of the most prideful peak moments of my time at YMH. Uh, once we started playing the heavy segment, like all the first rows just got up collectively and just started heading out. And I doubt any of the mics picked this up, but that might have been the hardest I've ever laughed in my life. I, like I hurt my throat. I would like to thank everyone that you are currently seeing on screen. They are producers of the show via clicking the Patreon link in the description below. Without their help... I wouldn't be able to put out these shows as regularly, consistently uh, as I currently do. And if you guys would like to contribute to this show being delivered on a consistent, good, and well basis, go ahead and hit the Patreon link in the description below and support me at any level that you can. And uh, yeah, you know, this has been another another fun episode of Catching You Up. With, Not how it's okay to die. Oh, I've completely fucked that up. But, you know, I'd like to just say, I hope you had fun watching this episode. Uh, you had fun with these stories. But also, most importantly... This is a totally unconfirmed news.